So the most important thing to do this week is actually to build a target, to create something you can use as a target at home, because that's one of the best uh, solo practices you can do on your own when you're at home, and it helps you to progress a lot. So having a dummy or a target on a wall or some sort of old, you know, boxing dummy or anything that you can practically use as a target, it might be a stick with uh, something on it, you know, fixed and all weight, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, pinned to, 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 to your floor. But that's super important. And if you have a target, you can do like a dozens, you know, hundreds of different drills and each of them will help you to progress as a fencer. So having a target at your home, building a target at your home is one of the most important tasks you have this week. So as soon as you have your target, we'll start with thrusts. And we, uh, we've already discussed this, but why we start with thrusts is first because in most of the Sabre treaties, uh, great fanceries so for all times like robbers and Hutton, they tell us that being uh, you know having a background in a pair or, or a pair fencing or a small sword uh, actually makes you an essentially better fencer because you already have one very important tool in your possession and you understand how to disengage after making a thrust and you have a you know all this uh, muscle memory doing thrust and that's very important uh, second thing is that uh, saber is a cutting weapon, so and cutting comes naturally and easily uh, with a saber. But thrusts give you a little bit different perspective and put a very uh, different type of pressure on your opponent. So just knowing that you're able of thrusting makes your opponent, uh, you know, makes it harder for your opponent to fence against you and makes you a much uh, better fencer. So thrusts is actually a first thing to learn, in my opinion. At least it's one of the ways that uh, work uh, that works perfectly, uh, learning how to thrust and then, you know, going further with uh, different uh, cutting techniques and uh, drills. Yeah, so basically for thrusting, we have two different wrist positions. This one is called Prenation, it's nails down, and this one is supination, nails up. And ideally, most people have their preferences. For, I'd say maybe 80 or more people, it uh, it is more natural to thrust in a supination than in pronation. But because saber is an asymmetric weapon, in some cases you need to be consciously choose what kind of thrust you do. So I uh, urge you to, to, to do both, whatever uh, 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 thrust and drill you do, to do both pronation and supination uh, thrusts and mix them. So you can easily switch between those, so you don't have, you know, you, you're not stuck in only one type of a thrust. The first exercise is very simple. It's a, a extension thrust. So that's a position you want to be in the end. So it's not a lunge, it's just extending your arm and thrusting. Pay attention that your arm extends first and only then you help with your body. Uh, back to this idea of moving your blade first and then extending with your body. It's not the only way to thrust or cut, but it's, uh, it's uh, one of the most counterintuitive things in fencing. So you need to learn it to have this tool in your possession. And then you can mix it with uh, some other things that basically like body feints or something uh, that uh, 
uh, you know, work uh, differently. But this one is one of the, it's actually one of the safest uh, ways to perform a thrust because um, you always keep your blade uh, between you and your opponent and you are not, uh, you know, you're not showing your real intention. It might be just like for showing up and then you, hop, then you thrust. Uh, but that's 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 the thing you must have in in your toolkit. So extension thrust up until you feel like super comfortable, you know, thrusting where you want, like a face area. Oops, don't do that. Yeah, the second simple but uh, also super valuable thing is to thrust uh, with a lunge. So you land the lunge, you get the position where you want to be, then you move back, and then you start. have an up space I don't have much but you can also you can also uh, thrust with a small step at lunch basically so you you are positioning uh, your body perfectly and start adding uh, distance control to your thrusting games So, simple extension thrusts, impronation and supination, lunge thrusts, impronation and supination, step lunge thrusts, impronation and supination. And yeah, that's, that's it with uh, uh, your basic exercises. And then you can, if you feel very comfortable, you can try a couple of like advanced things just for fun. So one of my favorite fun things to practice to, you know, to get a better thrust coordination is thrusting from a moving neck. It's hard, but it's, it uh, advances your point control drills. Another one fun thing is building the thrust and then stop watching also a very fun nice trick try those if you have time and you feel that your basic thrusting game is very good yeah thank you that was uh, our homework for this week and Keep progressing.